uh, making this review on my Ames 12 volt uh, 4000 watt continuous power inverter. I haven't seen a lot out there in terms of reviews, so I thought I would go ahead and review it for everyone out there looking to buy it. Um, I know it, it doesn't come across very well in the video, but it is extremely quiet. Um, I'm here, I have it set up currently in my mobile service truck, so it powers the lights. Uh, I have an oil, oil pump here. There's all types of equipment, a little welder, a vacuum pump, air compressor. Um, I was very skeptical about purchasing an inverter for this purpose due to the high uh, surge amp draw of all the uh, motors, the electric motors, the air compressor and whatnot. But it, it does a fantastic job. I'm very, very surprised, very, um, my expectations have been way exceeded by, uh, by what it's capable of. This, let's go over and take a look at it. Um, like I said, it's, it's really not loud. It's just a, a cooling fan that's on right now. I know it comes across louder than it really is. I wish I had a decimal meter so I could show you that it's not really that bad. Typically what we do in the service trucks like this is you run a generator and that generator is very loud. Actually, let me go ahead and start the generator up. I have it set up as a backup so we can you can get a, an estimate of just how loud the generator is in comparison. I know it's a quiet gen. There's a it's on the outside, of course, but there's a gentle hum out there. You can feel it through the floor and everything. But it's extremely quiet compared to the generator. Uh, okay, so let's get to the hookups of this. I have four aught battery cable to handle the, the load on the batteries. I have an amp clamp here to show you what we're drawing right now, 22 amps. Now this 4 aught battery cable, and I also have a 400 amp fuse. Uh, this battery, it's tough to see. Uh, we'll try to get a good look at it. Back here is my battery bank. Another light. Now I have six batteries. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six batteries right here that are hooked up to the inverter. I, I have a, I made a bus bar to connect all of them. And there's also, this is also connected with the, the truck batteries on, on the service truck. So any, anytime the truck, the truck is running, it's, char it's recharging the batteries, and it's usually never an issue to keep them charged. Um, so in total, I have eight batteries in the inverter, and that's very important to have a good battery bank to supply uh, proper, uh, proper voltage and current for, for the inverter to work properly. If you, if you were to hook this up to one or two batteries and try to start an air compressor, it, it's gonna be too much, it's gonna, it's going to bring the battery bolt too low and it's probably going to fault out and it's just not going to work you're going to be frustrated you're going to call customer support they're going to tell you sorry sir that's you know your fault anyway <clears throat> so what i also want to do here is i want to show you um the surge startup of the, comp the compressor is the biggest surge item i have in the truck and that's it, you know is a huge concern when buying the inverter but i've tell you I've, I've had zero problems it started it up and, and ran it every time no problems um along with my lights and other equipment at the same time. So, like I said, very impressed. Um, this particular inverter is an is a, uh, inverter charger. So, what that means is when you have shore power hooked into it, it recharges your batteries. Um, so let's say when I get back to the shop, or the way I have it hooked up is the generator, I have the generator coming into the inverter up here to the input side. There's an AC input side and then there's an AC output side. Now the output is obviously the inverter putting out voltage, supplying it to the, the grid of the service truck and everything. The input voltage I have is coming from the generator as well as a, an, a, an electrical inlet. So if I'm at the shop, I can plug in and that gives power uh, to the inverter. And then, then it recharges the, uh, the truck batteries. And it, it works phenomenally well. And there's also a transfer if you if you plug if you have the service truck plugged in obviously the inverting portion of the, the of this unit goes off um, and what it goes into is a pass-through mode so it allows your short your so let's say if I use my air compressor it's running off of the the shore power you're plugged into rather than the inverter and the truck batteries and it also recharges the truck batteries at the same time that it's in pass-through mode it's it's completely uh, 
well thought out and well built. I'm very happy and very surprised with this unit. Uh, and also, there's a oh, there's a t there's a slight time time delay to when you plug shore power in. It has to register that there's a a oh boy, the unit has to register that there is a constant uh, input supply voltage before it there's a transfer switch inside of the unit before it switches that switch over to make sure there's an un uninterrupted power supply. Um, but when it switches from shore power, the pass-through mode, to inverter voltage, it's within milliseconds and the lights, well, to my eye, the lights don't flicker at all. I'm sure if you were to, to test it with a camera, you might, you might pick up a little bit of a flicker. But the transfer switch is, the internal automatic transfer switch is also excellent fantastic so you don't need to really do anything with it uh, okay so and on this side you have your move this out of the way so you can see better this is essentially just your battery hookup right here and this green this green connection right here is for an automatic generator start feature so if you have this at home you're uh, you have using solar panels and you're off the grid and Let's say your battery volts drop too low. That can send a signal out to your generator, fire the generator up to recharge your batteries. I don't, I don't need that in my setup, but it's nice to have. Um, uh, you know, if that's if that's the way you have it set up. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up a couple loads so you can see amp draw. So what I have to do is we're going to drain a little bit out of the compressor. Very loud, I know. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we have our amp clamp here set on AC amps. We're gonna try to catch the peak amp draw when it starts up, because that's your big your big draw. And right now, with just the lights on, just the lights on, we're drawing 22.3 amps. So let's go ahead and fire it up. spiked at 70 I've I've measured this before and it spiked much higher around 160 and it's still been able to handle it let's do a few start cycles so we can see if we can get it any higher it has there's an extra fan that kicks on when there's a, a large load like that so once it cools down for a few seconds that other fan will go off there it goes okay you see I had no problem starting that compressor right up I even have a, a microwave in here for when it gets cold out you know this is about 1,000 watts 1200 watts maybe but that starts up no problem you see the draw on the battery bank There's, let me go over here and show you my vacuum pump. This also is a, a huge load uh, when first starting up. That's only 70, 71, 70 amps or so. Now typically I'll have the compressor running with the a couple other items and you know that's about 350 amps that's why I have the 400 amp uh, fuse but that's about 350 amps but if you divide that among eight batteries it's about I don't know what 40 you have four a little over 40 amps per battery which is a lot but if you like I said a mine's hooked to the truck charging system so it constantly recharges now the trucks only capable of putting out about 60 to 70 amps to recharge the, the entire battery bank so as soon as a component cycles off then the batteries start to recharge a little bit for myself and usually I'm driving around as well so they get recharged when I'm driving around so it's not a problem 
Um, and also another great thing about this inverter is it has a an automatic standby feature, which I'll show you right now. Right now the inverter's on, and I also I also have it in the automatic standbys. What that means is when you turn all the loads off, uh, the inverter goes off. Okay, and now you can hear this beeping. And what the inverter is doing, it's sending out a pulse, a voltage pulse, trying to detect any loads. And it's not really detecting any large loads, so the inverter stays in a low power mode. And what it does actually, when it pulses that voltage, it comes on briefly. Now this amp clamp's not able to pick it up because I don't have peak, peak amperage on it, but I will use this one and we'll pick up the peak amperage so you can see how much it gets to when it pulses the pulses the voltage. That's about 6.2 amps. So it pulses about 6 amps every 3 seconds. Okay? Which yeah, over time that would drain the batteries. But if you average that out compared to having the inverter just let's turn this inverter on. This switch Right here, it's a three position, let's get a better look, three position switch. So up is in the auto standby feature, and the middle is just completely off. And down, the inverter is gonna be on. And so you'll see the inverter's on, it's yeah, about six, about six amps while it's on. So let's put it back into the standby mode. Okay, so standby I like, cause let's say I'm done at the end of the day. I turn off all my equipment, I leave, and it goes into this standby mode. Now let's say, oh, I need to I need to use something. And what it does is it detects that load and it turns the inverter on for you. So I turn my heat gun on. All right. And now everything's working. Now the inverter's on and running and I can use it for whatever I need to. The reason why the lights don't trigger it is because of the ballasts and the fluorescent lights. They, it's not enough load for the, uh, for the inverter to detect it. That's why I use another you know, a grinder or a heat gun or whatever else to, to pick up the load. And this beeping is actually my amp clamp. Pretty annoying. Okay. But yeah, so the automatic mode, the standby mode is fantastic. So now I'm done at the end of the day, turn it off, inverter goes off. We're back into standby, standby mode, which is a great low power consumption. And it's also, um, like I said, it's also readily available. If I need to go ahead and turn the lights on or do whatever I need to. The, the automatic uh, intelligence of this unit is, is really phenomenal, fantastic. Like I said, the when you have it plugged on shore power too, there's an automatic transfer switch within the inverter that switches power over from shore to inverter uh, you know, on its own. You don't really have to do anything with it. It's really remarkable. Um, so overall, yeah, I would say I would really highly recommend this inverter. It's a the Ames uh, 4000 watt inverter charger. Uh, the maximum output that it can handle for recharging the batteries when it's uh, in charger mode is 100 amps. Now you can see on you can see on this control panel up here, it's not coming through very clearly. This dial right here is where you select what kind of battery batteries you have, whether it be AGM. Um, sealed lead acid whatnot there's a there's a bunch of different selections on here you can see in your manual uh, which you know what's best for your application and then this little dial right here is actually your charge selector now I didn't really get this when I first I don't know, cause I didn't have the battery charger hooked up right away but this essentially if you have it all the way to the right it, it maxes out your battery charging capability 100% so that's 100 amps and if you have it down all the way it'll max out at about 25 amps now that that's you can adjust that if, if you want a higher charge rate it goes into three different stages of automatic charging um, high charge and then a uh, kind of a medium charge I forget what they refer to in, in the manual and then a float charge uh, to keep the batteries maintained uh, but overall I would really have to recommend this in charger, uh, this inverter charger. If you, if this is the route you wanted to go, I have to stress the battery bank is really important. You need a good uh, set of batteries if you want to make this work. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please list them in the comments. I would do a longer video, but 15 minutes is about what we max out at. So please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.